I've previously, I do a lot of work in uh, education, and I've previously worked with, with children and working professionals, um, mostly looking at uh, teaching mathematics and teaching medicine and very specific domains. And right now I work in, uh, at Harvard um, on sort of two separate things. Um, one is augmented reality makerspaces and physics uh, science education, and then on the other on the other side of my postdoc is uh, doing work on virtual reality and bias and empathy training. And so, if you're interested in in any of these background things, uh, feel free to come and chat with me. For this talk, I'm only going to focus on augmented reality for makerspaces, um, but I'm happy to chat. As uh, feel free to approach me. And so. I'm really interested in uh, makerspaces because they're these kind of pretty magical environments where people get together due to a passion or an interest to pursue something or to build something. And once they get into these spaces, they basically collaborate with other people, they exchange knowledge, they start building objects, they learn things as they go along, they kind of push their boundaries and their comfort zones and they're exposed to a lot of different things. Um, so there's, there are these really great environments for collaboration and learning. And we're interested to, to see how augmented reality can be brought to these spaces because one of the issues in these spaces is that you're dealing with a lot of invisible phenomena um, and that makes it hard to understand sometimes what you're doing and what you're building. And so a lot of the problems that people have is they kind of come into a space wanting to build something, but they don't really understand why it's not working. Uh, and they kind of tend to um, gravitate toward just following instructions rather than, uh, than actually understanding what's going on. And so we're trying to understand if we brought augmented reality to these spaces, can we make some of these invisible uh, phenomena more visible? And how does that change education and collaboration? So, one of the examples of things that people make in makerspaces, but also uh, this is kind of a typical high school activity also, a, sci a science high school activity, where you can actually make a speaker out of just a magnet and a coil of wire and a, like a plastic cup. And once you plug that into your phone, the speaker actually produces sound. And the reason why this works is that once you have electricity going through a wire, that creates a magnetic field. And then if you put a magnet close to it, you can basically push and pull that magnet, and that creates a motion that can vibrate the air. Um, but without understanding the underlying principles, you wouldn't be able to understand why the speaker is making sound. You'd just be able to see, oh, this thing is making sound, but I don't know why. And so. We built a system where it's kind of a, it's just a, a replica of a speaker, and we use augmented reality to show the invisible things, such as electricity and magnetic fields and forces and things like that. So in this case, we're basically, when you look at it through a HoloLens device, this is what we're using, you can see electricity flowing through the wires, you can see magnetic fields, how they're changing, you can see the audio waves coming out, and you can also see the forces that are acting on those objects. And so this is basically a, a way of uh, augmenting a physical object in order to better understand what's going on inside of it. And then we're curious to know how is this changing how people learn and how people collaborate with each other. And another thing that we're currently building on is building a toolkit for being able to add a lot of visualizations to physical, um, to physical objects. So in this case, on the top left, we have a robot that's got sensors on it. And with, still through a HoloLens device, we're basically able to get information from the sensors and then we're going to display it so that the user understands what the robot is actually sensing about the world. So in this case, it's picking up uh, the distance, it's a proximity sensor to a hand, uh, so it's, it can basically showing you uh, what it's thinking about and it's also got a magnet sensor on the bottom there so it can show you how, uh, what kind of things it's picking up. And in this toolkit that we're building, we're also adding the ability to program objects. So for example, as you're programming the robot, you might be programming on a computer, but then you can, the program can be embedded into the, uh, f your, in your physical view of the object. So in this case, you can see what the robot is sensing, but also what pieces of the program are attached to the robot. And our our thought is that if people can program by looking at the objects, this is going to make it much easier for them to comprehend uh, how that object is basically processing the information that it's receiving and responding to the world. 
And we can also do interesting things, such as once you've attached a piece of program to the robot, you can also move the robot to a certain uh, uh, configuration, and you can tell it, use this configuration to trigger the program variables. So for example, the if statements that are in there are going to be triggered based on the threshold values that the, that the robot is currently in. So we're investigating how to basically merge these digital information, such as sensors and programs, into a physical space. And the other thing is this toolkit is, is meant to be used for any variety of situations. So you can basically take holograms and attach them to sensors in your world and then be able to comprehend what those sensors are picking up by basically looking at them rather than looking at a computer screen. Um, and then with this, you can do really interesting things. So for example, in this case, there's a relationship between voltage and current. It's called Ohm's law. Um, and basically, in this case, I'm, I'm changing a resistance in a wire, and I'm changing the intensity of a light, of a light bulb, the LED there. Um, but at the same time, the system is able to show me these two graphs that are on top of each other, which are showing me this inverse relationship between two variables of voltage and uh, current. And so being able to look at things and play with them, students are able to understand these invisible relationships that are driving the objects around their world. And so with this kind of toolkit, we're hoping to make it easily, um, make students able to easily uh, see what the objects are doing, the objects that they're debugging. And in that, in that way, we're interested to know how is that changing the way they're, um, they're basically collaborating with each other and the way they're understanding the world and things like that. And so the way we're measuring, we're doing research. So we build these toolkits and then we run user studies in order to analyze how is this impacting education and collaboration. And we use a lot of different kind of uh, measures. So we ask people, we give people pre and post tests to know after you've interacted with these experiences, did that, did that make you learn anything? Um, or did that make you sort of change your attitude? So we also give them surveys and, uh, and interviews. But we also look at other things, such as we use Kinect sensors to measure people's postures and the way they're, they're physically interacting with the system and with each other. We also use uh, physiological sensors, such as Empatica bracelets, that can measure the arousal and the excitement that people experience, or maybe even the fear as they interact with things. And then we also use, for example, we can, we're using the tracking from the HoloLens in order to in understand how people are moving their heads and what they're looking at, in order to understand how often do people look at the same thing and how does their attention move around as they interact with these things. And so by analyzing all these different sensors, we can basically get a richer picture of not only are people learning, but also continuously in real time, how does their learning change over time through that process of interacting with these, um, with these augmentations and technologies? And we're sort of taking an objective view on this. So we're, we think these kind of technologies have, have a, a large benefit on improving collaboration and education. But we also are kind of curious what, what the technologies are detrimental for. And so we have, out of our results, we basically have um, findings in terms of how augmented reality is useful for something, and, but also detrimental for some things. So some of the things that are coming out of this research are that augmented reality is really good for understanding spatial structures. So, so for example, people really understand magnetic field shapes uh, and how electricity is influencing uh, the, the shapes of the fields. They can also better, they're better able to transfer what they've learned to, uh, to, to similar situations. Their attitudes change. So after interacting with augmented reality, people say things like, oh, I wish that uh, I would have had this when I was in uh, high school because then I would have pursued a more, you know, I might, I might have pursued science and uh, physics more than what I'm currently doing. So it kind of opens up people's, um, people's perspectives into different careers and different uh, approaches of what they might do in their life. It also changes their attitudes towards themselves. So we have these pre and post survey questions about how they feel about their own ability to engage in physics or and engage in these kind of questions. And after the experience, they actually rate themselves as more uh, that they are 
better able to do physics. So their, their ratings of their confidence of engaging in physics are improved after these experiences. So it seems really powerful in terms of changing people's attitudes uh, in terms of their career and life path. Obviously also it makes, them people, makes people engaged uh, while they're experiencing these things. And it also changes the way people communicate and the way they teach each other. So by being able to see these invisible uh, representations of information, they can basically, when people are talking to each other, they can point at things and say, oh, look at that thing and see how it's changing when I push this button. And in that way, they're teaching each other much more easily. Or somebody who is confused can say, I wonder why this thing is doing this. And then the other person can communicate more easily. So being able to present these representations basically influences how people uh, teach each other and how leadership emerges and how they collaborate. But at the same time, there's, there's also some detriments. So it does turn out, we, we basically have multiple conditions and in, in some of the conditions, we, we didn't give people any HoloLens device. And in another condition, we gave people a HoloLens device, but we didn't, we actually just showed them these uh, augmented reality labels that were on top of the physical setup, but we didn't show them anything else, such as what electricity is doing or what magnetic fields are doing or things like that. So we just basically made them wear the HoloLens and that's pretty much it. We didn't give them any useful information. And it turns out that even those people were super excited about the experience. They were like, oh my God, this is the future. It's going to help me learn so much more. So just wearing something on your head, there's this novelty effect. And just seeing holograms makes people think that something exciting is happening. Um, it does improve their engagement, but it, that doesn't translate into learning gains. So we have to be really careful about how we read into people's excitement. So it's, it's better to actually measure if people are learning something or not, rather than just asking them how they feel about this technology and the future of this technology. Um, also see that uh, sometimes their attention is hyper-focused. So people basically pay attention to some things, but mm, ignore other things. So in augmented reality, we have information that's holographic, but then we also have physical posters on the wall, and we also have extra tools that people can use. But it turns out that people who use augmented reality, they're very focused on what they see, and so that creates kind of a tunnel vision, um, which prevents them from learning with other tools, other physical things available to them. And then also this, it turns out that augmented reality kind of masks, it, it prevents people from learning some things because they're so focused on what, on what they visually see that, for example, in our case, people don't understand the relationship between electricity and the way the forces are acting on the system because they're not, they're not interacting physically with things too much. So there's some information that is not learned. And yeah, and also misperception about uh, people's own learning. They get really excited, but that doesn't actually mean that they learn. And I'm out of time, but uh, if you feel like continuing, feel free mm -hmm. to email me um, or find me around afterwards. Yeah. Thank you. Julia, thank you very much.